Now, let me show you the same plate component simulation with Abacus. Very quickly, we go through. So, so from visualization, go to the part module, and let's suppose this plate component we have, and I'm going to save it as a new file and erasing everything simply you can delete the sorry step most of the things will be delete automatically and here we have constraints i'm going to delete those constraints also and let's say this amplitude i don't want okay that's all boundary conditions here we have one boundary condition that also i'm going to delete i'm going to model this thing manually again okay so this plate we have and uh, we followed the iso standard that is easily available with wikipedia and this is the snapshot this is standard i followed here the value is in inch for the plate type of component see the thickness is very less as compared to the other dimension if you have seat type of component then your thickness will be toward higher side so this is my plate component i'm not going to model it again and this component also is splitted because i want a proper massing proper mass flow especially in the damaged region so after that you can go with the property okay what material i created Actually, I consider this material from the one research article and I calibrate that material. Uh, I hope you know about the calibration, material calibration. If don't, please make the comments and I will upload a video on material calibration also. So, of course, these damage parameter we cannot find from the calibration, but elastic plastic properties for the two stage strain we can find out. So this is my plastic behavior and you can see the plastic strain is around 0.05. This is elastic properties, 70 GPA, Young's modulus 0.33, Poisson's ratio density you can define and next is damage parameter. Here the damage parameters play very important role. Damage evolution I discussed in my previous video very briefly. If you not gone through, please go through. So here, the displacement at failure exactly thrice the plastic strain. Why? Because displacement at failure is nothing but your plastic strain into characteristic length of the element. And here, the characteristic length of the element is 2, not 3, sorry, not thrice, exactly twice. One more thing, what you can do, say this is my plastic maximum plastic strain you can directly copy it go to the damage evolution and you can paste it sorry not this value plastic strain okay this value plastic strain go to the damage evolution just paste it and simply define multiply symbol into two why two this is my characteristic length of the element. So this is the displacement at failure. So the value will be automatically modified. And next is fracture strain. As I explained earlier, you must need to define a proper value of the fracture strain. So after that, you can go with the OK. So now I need to assign this property to the component. OK, important point. Here, when I created a solid section, why solid section? The plane stress and plane strain component, if you want to simulate, you have to define the solid property to them, solid material, okay, not the cell property. You must define solid property. In solid property, you must check on this option, plane stress or plane strain condition, and you can define the thickness value. Of course, this is my plane stress condition and my thickness is 1. The default value is always 1. If you want something else, you can define. And if you uncheck this value, then also it will consider by default plane stress with thickness of unit. So go to the dismiss 
and uh, I assign the properties. Then after I go to the assembly. Yeah, of course, just I call this part and next is step. The damage type of analysis, element deletion type of analysis, you can perform by general static step, by implicit step, or by explicit step. With all step, you can define. But here, I am going to define an implicit quasi static step as my simulation. I am assuming that compression or tension test is at very really slow rate and this needs too much time, too much event time actually. So, I am defining here dynamic implicit. Why I am not going to define the general static step? Because after the fracture, sometime this may, sometime not always, this general static may not converge the solution properly. So, let me define the dynamic implicit and go to the quasi static. As there is no inertia involved in the system, I can simply use the quasi static. It will help to converge the solution fastly. As well as it will not consider any inertia or any dynamic behavior within the system. So, the load will be automatically defined as a ramp. Non-linear geometry, I am going to check on increment, let's say 1000 maximum increment, initial time of 0 0.1, maximum time that I allow, sorry, maximum here, maximum time, increment time that I allow is also 0 0.1 and the minimum one, I am going to allow up to 10 to the power minus 9 because on the damaging point, on the element deletion point, it need a very less time increment and the most important thing other most important thing the metric storage is unsymmetric because it's a non-linear type of behavior so if you get any difficulty in the convergence try to use with the unsymmetric go to ok dismiss okay if you want to plot the stress strain curve or force displacement curve you can go to define the history output here, the constraint fix, and here is the load. Let's say, okay, these uh, reference points are already created. Otherwise, you can go with tool and say reference point here. So, on that point, I want to define the fix, and this fix will be nothing but your maximum reaction force point. Let's go to the assembly and sets already fix and this load sets are created if those are not just likewise you can double click on that say the fixed point this is my fixed point and geometry and this point i want to select similarly again double click on that and say this is my load point i'm going to create those two sets because i want to define the history output on those two sets go to that create say reaction force maximum will be on the fixed point so reaction force continue not for the whole model only for the set and this is my set on the fixed point and instead of every n increment i am going to use the sorry the same same options but with the frequency of one at each increment i want history output for the force value okay i now consider the reaction force so what should be value rf1 this rf1 in the x direction and similarly i am going to create the displacement history output for each increment not for the whole model set and yeah, of course, here I'm going to apply the load, means displacement as a load. So, this will be my displacement point. So, the displacement along x direction, u1, that's all. Now, go to the dismiss. It is not necessary, but if you want to plot the force displacement curve, then you can use it. Next is interaction. See, this dogbone safe component is going to be hold from this and from this area. So, you can define 
a coupling or a rigid body constrained here and here okay so let me define click on create rigid body say rigid body one constraint one okay body this is my body actually and the constraint point this is my constraint point that's all similarly constraint two rigid body i'm assuming this area will be fixed within the holder so so there is no deformation that's why i'm going to make it rigid nothing else that's all after interaction load so the load value as i told the displacement in term of load i'm going to define say fix condition and this point is fix and caster means totally fix let me move it in the initial step go to the define displacement displacement value at this point and uh, in x direction this is my x direction i'm going to define this value say 40 mm and go to the ok of course the large value i define because that load should be sufficient enough to generate strain more than the fracture strain so after that you can go with the mesh options okay this component is already meshed and how i meshed this component actually let me delete first yes okay so what is important for me in this region the element should be properly aligned and the same size of the element must be there because based on that element size we define the damage evolution parameter so that's why I have gone for the structured mass here. So a structured mass and click on OK. And apart from this region, whatever mass is, I can accept. And uh, as uh, I told you, for the complete region, I have element size of 5. But on the specific damage region, I have element size of 2. So element size not for the edge, for the cell. Oh, sorry, there we don't have cell faces. These faces and select the element size 2 and OK. Now you can go with the mass. Yes. And if you want to modify the massing on these regions, of course, you can go through. So make sure the element type, as we have the plane stress component, the element type also must be plane stress and if you have plane strain condition you can go with the plane strain okay but right now i have the plane stress condition reduce integration scheme i want to utilize only because of the better computation efficiency and mass is sufficient fine so after that go to the job and say create a job with damage and the fracture strain is 0. Point. So 0 p 15 okay uh, we cannot consider point value here if I define 0. 0.15 it will show the error message. So instead of this point I use the p symbol. see with damage 0. 0.15 and click on continue. Yeah, this is already exist. So go to the parallelization if you want. I don't want. Go to the submit. Let it complete and we will go through the visualization. Okay, see here. The time step is going to be reduced. I mean to say the time increment. The time increment is here very less. It means in this area of the time span, or I can say in this time span, my fracture take place or element deletion take place. That's why this is too much less. 
okay these are my simulation results and let's plot click on contour options go to the initial frame likewise and then play okay so it will go likewise so you can see after some increment there are a small knacking in the component let me move manually and as i told you the knacking will be appear more see he, here we have knacking effect the knacking will be more if you consider the 3d component as you consider this component as a plain stress component that means thickness of the component is very less along the z direction that's why knacking phenomena also very small so what happening exactly here by using the damage modeling we try to replicate the crack behavior of the component at tension loading obviously to run it more precisely we need the finer meshing okay but more than the crack group we are interested in the damage modeling only how or we can say at what stress the element will damage and how it will represent the behavior so basically in the crack there is nucleation at the initial stage and that nucleation take place at the plane of maximum shear stress or maximum normal stress once strain i mean to say plastic strain reaches to its maximum limit let me plot plastic strain let's say this is equivalent plastic strain oh sorry not equivalent here it is equivalent plastic strain so once the plastic strain reaches to its limiting value the nucleation of the crack take place and after the nucleation you can see there is very sudden or we can say very rapid change in the element deletion as we know we consider here the larger element size if you want to capture this behavior more precisely you need the finer element size so here you can see the strain reaches to its limiting value and then crack nucleation and then crack propagation take place and you may not able to see the crack front here properly because of element size otherwise you may able to see the crack front also okay maybe in the stress let's say yeah in the stress you can see this is the crack front this is the crack front so let me change the mode limit and let's say recompute okay now you can see crack nucleation then you can see the crack front please do not compare with exact crack analysis but kind of nature we can replicate okay so this is crack front and once element having sufficient degradation in their stiffness they will be removed okay means they are no longer able to sustain any load so likewise it will fracture and then finally it will break so let me play it and at the point of crack propagation and initiation there will be very small increment so only that small increment software able to converge at a time that's why i previously explained when we have crack or we can say element deletion time at that time the convergence rate will be very small so that's all for this video i hope you have better understanding of such analysis and we may go with the 3d component also 3d elements also in next video so thank you for listening thank you very much